From World War I to the current war in Ukraine, stopping tanks has been an essential part of warfare. But how do you stop a giant hulking beast? Sure, there's missiles, artillery, anti-tank guns, other tanks. But what about the obstacles to just get them to stop? What are these things? Or those? And how do they work? Well, let's find out today. The earliest anti-tank obstacles were from World War I. With the advent of the tank, they had to figure out ways to stop them. One of the first ways to stop a tank was literally just tons and tons of barbed wire. There was lots of it on the Western Front, and so all they had to do was pile it up even more, and then the tank would get stuck. This is surprisingly effective. Time has gone on, they figure out patterns and designs for barbed wire to make it extra effective at stopping tanks. Plus, when you add them on to some of our other obstacles that we'll talk about in a moment, they become extra effective. Other main way that they would stop tanks in World War I was trenches. Obviously, when we think of World War I, we probably think of trenches. And this was because they were everywhere. And all they had to do to try and stop a tank that was specifically designed to go over the trenches that were being built, make the trenches slightly wider and slightly deeper. With millions of men on the Western Front, this wasn't that hard to do. Anti-tank trenches also saw heavy use during World War II, especially on the Eastern Front. The Soviets had lots of civilians that they could force into working day and night to dig trenches. And this was super cheap because they already had people and shovels. And you just give them shovels and they start digging. Enough people or with enough digging equipment really quick to dig out. However, trenches aren't impassable, but there are different variations of trenches to make it harder for tanks to be able to plow through them. Just putting a short cement or wooden wall that's only a few feet high on one end of the trench, it makes it even harder for tanks to get over those trenches, especially in the older models from World War II. One of the most surprising and cheap ways to stop a tank in a wooded area is just to use trees. This technique has been used since the Roman era to stop wagon trains, and it still works today against tanks. US and other NATO member countries train their militaries to use trees to their advantage. By making them fall in specific patterns, intertwining and interlacing, they're able to create most impassable obstacles. On top of that, if you put wire or rope or chain intermixed with the trees, they become incredibly hard to move. Just one guy and a chainsaw or some debt cord to blow the trees, it's really quick and effective to be able to interlace these trees on the ground. You'd completely stop an enemy advance if you did. And if you mix in barbed wire, booby traps, landmines into this mix, or maybe an ambush, it's not that hard to get a full column, an entire enemy advance halted simply by using trees and roads. Help me stop those German tanks and subscribe. Speaking of landmines, these are a fairly cheap, effective, and quick way to prevent the enemy from being able to enter an area or make it extremely costly if they decide to do so. Coupled with the element of surprise and deadly explosions, these things are a really for formidable foe. Next, we have these spiky boys. Known as the Czech Hedgehog, originals were built by their namesakes, the Czechs, to try and prevent the Nazis from being able to invade during World War II. Once again, these are really cheap and effective. They're originally designed to be 1.4 meters high, specifically designed so the tank would end up hitting it, but driving up on top of it, bottoming out, and possibly being skewered by the spike on the weak underbelly of these tanks. The sheer weight of the tank itself would be the thing that would push it onto this spike. They were designed to be deployed extremely quickly and manufactured easily by anybody. All you need is a welding setup, extra scrap metal, and away you go. We're seeing this in Ukraine with many Ukrainian welders building these things up super quickly by just taking apart train tracks. These were seen on the shores of Normandy during the Soviet defense of Moscow. These are still being used, obviously, in the war in Ukraine, including in the early days of the war. They took some of the ones from the World War II Museum and put them in the street to protect Kyiv. They can either be cemented into the ground, making it really hard for a tank to pass them, or on soft ground, they can just be let loose, and if a tank dries up on them, they'll tumble a little bit, and the tank will get stuck on top. However, in sand, like on the beaches of Normandy, they need small feet to be put underneath them, otherwise they'll sink into the sand or get pushed away by the surf. Once again, being intertwined with barbed wire and land mines, these can be extremely difficult to pass. After the war, they actually figured out that they had about a 40% success rate on stopping a tank. However, as a tanker, are you going to take nearly 50-50 chance versus just turning around and trying somewhere else? Plus their solid metal construction and skinny size made it really hard to destroy with explosives or tank rounds. The next anti-tank obstacle is dragon's teeth or Toblerones. Very similar to Czech hedgehogs, these are used to deter an enemy, making the tank bottom out on top of these. They are also extremely easy and quick to build because what country doesn't have nearly endless amounts of cement? It's incredibly quick and easy to deploy thousands of these for miles. We're seeing this in Russia right now where Russia has deployed these across the line. 
However, these are easily defeated with explosives or tank rounds, and so they need to be protected with anti-tank defenses and landmines. In addition to these types of obstacles, there's also Belgian gates, which are movable, ramps, asparagus spikes, and many more. All of them serve basically the same purpose and just trying to prevent tanks from entering an area. Set up in a big giant line, they're really hard to get past, especially if they're being defended. Like we've seen on the beaches of Normandy or any other fortified line or the Maginot line, all these obstacles can be used really effectively, especially in tandem. You add in anti-personnel mines, you're able to make it so it's really hard for infantry to destroy or move any of these obstacles. These can be used for deterrence, for slowing down the enemy, or for trying to force the enemy into a fatal funnel. Once slowed or stopped, the enemy tanks and infantry can be taken out with tank guns, rockets, and older times anti-tank rifles, jets, or anything else that you could possibly imagine that could destroy a tank. For smaller or poorer forces, sometimes they have to get really creative, like the Finns during the Winter War against the Soviets. They invented the Molotov cocktail, which could be thrown into the engine exhaust of the tank, making it explode. Molotov cocktails were named after Molotov, the ambassador of Russia. All of these and many more can be used to stop tanks. However, also ways to defeat these obstacles. If you'd like me to cover that in another video, drop it down in the comments and subscribe. Subscribe